All right, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Performance Analytics Office Hours. We're glad that you're able to join us for this session. We do this session every two weeks, as you may or may not know. And for those of you who are new, very, a very warm welcome. And for those of you who have joined us before, welcome back. My name is David Van Heusen, as I mentioned earlier, and I'm an enablement evangelist, as I so call myself, for performance analytics and reporting. And before we get started, I want to run through a few logistical items for today's session. This session is for you. This is your opportunity to get some fresh ideas, gain a better understanding of performance analytics, and get some practical advice from some of the world's experts in the field. There may be cases where we can't solve a technical issue or get into details about your instance, so we may ask you to open a case on high, or we may, or we may need to follow up offline so we can cover as many questions as possible during this session. We do have many people on the line, so please keep yourselves on mute unless you ask a question. And also, please feel free to ask questions via Zoom's text chat, because that's an easy way to, uh, for us to get back on the questions, even though uh, many people will ask series of questions. We may ask follow-up questions to clarify so we can ensure we are answering appropriately. Please make sure to address the chat to everyone and not just to me as the host. So because we have other experts on the line that can help answer your questions. In order for them to see your questions, the questions need to be posted to everyone. All right. Please note that this session is being recorded. So if you or your organization is not comfortable with that, please disconnect now. The sessions are posted to YouTube and the link to the playlist uh, was available on the page where you registered the session. And I'll show it afterwards at the end of this uh, session as well. Uh, as a guest speaker today, we have Robert John Barmentlo, who will be doing a demo on GeoMap reports. And following uh, Robert John's presentation, uh, we'll open up the floor for your questions. Uh, Robert John has been a product manager uh, within service now for the last four years, uh, almost five already, I think. Um, so he's been working on the on the reporting side of the house for the for the longer time of his uh, tenure, uh, and he knows all the ins and outs on map reports. So a very warm welcome to Robert John, who can start sharing as soon as I stop sharing. So thanks, Robert, and uh, please go ahead. All right. Um, quick mic check. I am I audible, uh, David? Yes, you are, Robert John. Loud and clear. All right. Oh, and I'm going to share, and I think I'm now sharing a GeoMap slide, right? That is correct. <clears throat> All right. So um, thank you for the introduction. Thank you for the opportunity also to elaborate a little bit more on one of our data visualizations being the uh, geographical map uh, in our in-platform reporting. Uh, thank you, David, for the introduction. Uh, yes, I'm a product manager with Informs Analytics and Reporting. Um, and, and next to what David already mentioned, my, my special interest is always into how uh, can we create a good way, how can we offer a good way to um, transform data into information, uh, if that's through the use of a data visual or in any other kind of way, because you need that information uh, to do something with it and ideally you actually also want to transform that information into an insight something that actually means something to you and maybe because you are in platform anyway uh, already do the action on that insight so that's that's basically my my special focus that i um try to have with all the features uh, and all the products that we're working on so uh, for today i have a, a few slides to show i have a quick demo to show on uh, uh, geographical maps. Um, we are very conscious of the fact that there are several ways in the platform to show uh, data as information. 
on something like a map, um, there are some uh, Google API um, connections here and there in the platform. Uh, we are aware of the fact that there are options in the store uh, to also use on uh, map uh, reports. Uh, but for this uh, demo, I'm just going to focus on the one that we deliver out of the box in our in-platform reporting. Let's move to the next slide. Here it is. So for the agenda, I'll quickly highlight uh, what it is. Uh, what is that GeoMap uh, report? Uh, some best practices. Uh, how does it work? We'll go a little bit technical there. Uh, not too deep. There's a lot of information on uh, the community, but also on the docs site available. Uh, and then I'll move to a demo. All right, here we go. So what is it? The uh, GeoMaps, as already mentioned, it is a uh, what I think one of the best data visuals that we have in the platform. Maybe it's it's together with the performance analytics, text analytics, uh, visualization, or maybe the workbench. Uh, but it is definitely one of those three. I, I really like it because it, it really visualizes uh, impact. It really visualizes volume uh, into, hey, something is happening somewhere. Uh, I need to take an action on that. Uh, what we do with that GeoMap uh, data visual is we represent it as either a heat map or a pinned location, uh, which is a, a heat map, I think is clear. Uh, that's volume in a certain area. Uh, and the pin location just gives you the location of where your records or where your task or where, where your incidents or whatever you configured are happening. It has many features. Uh, you can zoom within the, uh, the maps itself. Uh, you can click through and it will go through different kind of levels uh, that you configured. Uh, for example, I start at the world, move to the US, uh, move to a certain state, move to a city, maybe move into a street, into a building, uh, whatever you configure. Uh, it, of course, works on our, uh, just our, our tables, but also our report data sources that we have in the platform. It works on interactive filters. It works uh, together with report drill down, so you can even connect it to a new charts to uh, then uh, visualize that subset of that information. Um, and there's an easy creation through the report designer uh, user interface. So a few things on uh, best practices. Uh, of course, the GeoMap is based on our in-platform data. Uh, there are some great benefits but always come with our in-platform data, which means um, you can always integrate it into any kind of, or natively integrate it in any kind of solution or dashboard. Um, it is always real time, of course, and uh, the fact that it's always secure, uh, protected by either sharing or a sharing of dashboard, sharing of the report itself, uh, or maybe on the lowest level of the data of the record itself, also on an access control layer. When we look at best practices, um, we say use the maps uh, data visualization when the location makes the point, when the location uh, is important and then when it comes to visualizing something as a heat map, of course, in relation with volume within that location. Um, a second best practice for specifically this data visualization is align your data model for, uh, for this easy, seamless, real-time visualization. Uh, there are some things that you need to do uh, to get it running uh, smoothly, and I'll show those in the next slide. Uh, and third of all, uh, and that's that's always a good practice for, for anything that we show, uh, start with the out-of-the-box, start with what, what we already deliver. Uh, we already out-of-the-box deliver a set of map sources and a set of maps. Uh, you can already start um, experimenting and, and building data visualization with those and, and see what they offer. All right, so how does it work? Um, and this, as mentioned, this slide is maybe a little technical. This is the only slide that, that goes into a little bit more technical level. Uh, we use a standard, a standard format, which is called GeoJSON. Uh, and that's used, I think, globally, uh, always when it comes to geographical kinds of way to, to visualize data. Uh, it represents simple geographical features based on a JSON structure. Um, and basically, there are three ways to plot the location data to a map. Uh, you can say, I want to use the data on a table, which is a direct mapping of the value of a location field, which can be anything, a city, a state, a country, to a unique value in the report map, the, the GeoJSON map. Um, second, you can use a mapping. Uh, that's the indirect mapping. The value of that location field is actually there translated to a unique value in the report map 
definition using location mappings. And third of all, you can use um, latitude and longitude. And the result of that is always that pinned location map. What we did was to make it a little bit simpler, we created those hierarchies, those mappings and structure, and we introduced a concept what we call map sources. And those map sources link um, all those, those uh, tables with the location fields it has to use together with the location hierarchy where you can set what is the parent and what is the child of your map drill down. Uh, and finally, is uh, the mappings it can use your, your setup maps actually in the system. A few things on known issues. Uh, if it doesn't work, uh, there is a, um, it, it could be the case that it's a missing city, a state or country information on a location record, uh, or maybe missing latitude, longitude information on that location record. The value of a location attribute that is not directly related to a report map attribute. Uh, Non-unique values that you might give to a location attribute. For example, if you have a state uh, that's wa for washington but you also use that that same value for something else uh, or uh, in this case also multiple values for location attribute identifying the same geographical area uh, for example if you use uh, us and usa to represent the same um, area so why not use google maps um, it is a little bit more tricky to overlay information on a, a google maps api connection it is hard to do a Heat map, uh, it is possible, but it's it's pretty hard to show a heat map uh, there. Uh, and of course, uh, I mentioned them before, all those features that you get um, with being part of that platform, like your, your interactivity, your interactive filters, your drill downs, everything that relates to our in-platform reporting solution. So on uh, this previous slide, I showed the uh, docs. There is a bunch of information there on how to set up those, those map sources, how to connect everything. It's, it's super extensive. And again, if there are any questions, I, uh, everyone is, is, of course, welcome to uh, head over to the communities and, and ask those questions over there. All right, then we come to a demo. I'll switch to an instance for this uh, to give a little bit of context of what we uh, sometimes see in the um, in in actually customers doing with with these kind of map solutions. Um, one example that I have is I've seen a field services organization that actually plotted the um, top down approach as from I want to see all the. Uh, things that are happening to my CIs as from a world level into the country level, into a state level, into a city level. And what they actually did was they tied it to a custom map uh, that they added to the system uh, with those locations of the CI where it was actually located within a certain uh, office or within a certain data center. Um, so the field engineers, they had the opportunity to go through the dashboard and immediately just up to up to the the area the office where that actual that ci was find the the, the ci that was um having a problem so what i'll do is here i'll uh, i'm showing a dashboard let's say for this example that i am an incident manager or an incident process owner or incident service owner that would like to have this full overview of everything that's that's high impact or a high priority um, and what I would also like to do, because I have that information in need, is, for example, see my open incidents by location, uh, the ones that are being created by a certain location. Maybe um, I have, for example, the need to also put um, a support desk in that same location or in that same time zone, um, because uh, then we can easier get our SLA um, agreement on um, tickets that might be raised. So what I do is I have this widget over here on this dashboard. I'll configure it. Uh, and in the report designer, I will say something like uh, incidents uh, open by location. I use the incident table for this one. Here we go. Let's hit next. Let's move within the report designer to the area where I can select the map report. I click next. It does immediately give me the UI message that it for now cannot generate a report because I did not select that map data. I did not select that map source that, that connects everything together. So it doesn't know right now 
Uh, of course, you can select all your different ways to aggregate your data. And what I'll do is, as I said, I wanted them opened by location. Uh, and what I can actually also do if I refresh this one, you will immediately see the output on the screen from a world level. But let's say uh, the United States is always of the, the first interest to me because I'm, I'm located there. I'm responsible for that area. You can even set your start map to be United States of America. And let's hit next. There it goes. Let's to make sure that it aligns with the other ones in the dashboard. Also give that color with it. Here we go. And I'll save this one. It will bring me back to the dashboard and immediately show that map report on my dashboard. Um, what you also see is that the data visuals here on the dashboard um, also have some interactive filters connected to them. Um, so what I'll do for in this case is I'll quickly open this one to make sure that it follows the interactive filter. I'll close it again and what I can now easily do is just play around with the for example, filtering, and you immediately see all the data real time change on my dashboard, which is, of course, a super powerful solution. And here we are. I'll remove this uh, one again. You can see here all the, um, all the options that I was talking about before. I can change this one immediately into the pin locations if I want to see the records that are actually on a certain location or change back into the heat map. Um, I can drill in a level, a level deeper or use the breadcrumbing to go up again, even to the world. Um, I can use the zooming if necessary. In case of this US map, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Um, I can give, uh, right now it says in the tooltip Colorado, but there are options to always show that information by default, uh, what the actual, um, state is or what the actual information is that I'm looking at. So I think that closes my um, demo. And that was also my presentation. So All right. it, up to you. Thank you very much. I have a, one question uh, from Jesus. Is there a way to do a map that has the world view by continent and they would like to see the detail of America and be able to see it then by country, state, and cities. And he's been struggling with the content, a continent. I, I, I think there is no, um, uh, let me think. I, I don't think there's currently a, um, I, I, if it's, if it fits into the hierarchy, it should be possible, but I, I'm doubting. Right. We'll, we'll copy the question and then we'll, we'll, we'll get back to the answer unless yeah. Adam already well, knows the answer. Well, I think I, I, I've done something similar um, I, I, with regions, with global regions. And I, I think what you need to do is to find a, a GeoJSON map that has the continents be, that you would go, but, or yeah, that would be above world, I think because world just shows the countries. So you need to have one above that that aggregates the countries. And then your data needs to have um, uh, not just the country level, but also have a field to be added to the location table or something that has continent. So you would see Europe and Asia. Um, I, I, I know the case that I, I did it on was um, EMEA, APJ, and Americas. Um, so it was, it was possible to do, but you have to make sure that that data is there in the records or in your, in your, in your hierarchy. And then you'll need a map, you'll need to create a map, which probably exists. One of the awesome things about using GeoJSON is it is a standard, as um, Robert Jan said, it's out there. You can find lots of maps out there. And if you can't, you can create your own. Lots of tools out there to create your own as well. Yeah, I think I think that answers a lot of questions. Maybe we, we can take the Jesus as a question and see if we can, uh, uh, make make sure that we answer the question, but also uh, do it a little bit of an explanatory uh, blog or a little video uh, so that he can see how to do that. Um, so um, th there are some other questions as well. So we'll take that one offline. Uh, Jesus, if you don't mind, and we'll, we'll make sure that you, you get your answer and then everybody will get their answer. Uh, some other questions that I also saw in there from Jane Stone, for example, was, was that map built purely off the relationships between locations? and not the longitude-latitude fields? 
Yeah, I think the one we showed in the instance that I was showing was based on location. There, the locations were all mapped and we weren't using the longitude latitude. But of course, that, that is possible. That is one of the options that you can choose. Okay, and um, uh, the, the question way uh, to, for you, to answer you, uh, can this also be used for a specific site, like a building, uh, Robert? Like, for example, for field services, the answer? Yeah. Yeah, that is correct. You can you can uh, technically if if you um, you can put any kind of geo geojson map in. You can build your own uh, floor maps uh, according to that structure and and connect them into that hierarchy. All right, I think that covers all the the map related questions so far at least. Uh, so again, uh, Robert, thank you very much for presenting and uh, You're welcome. Uh, demoing uh, the the maps reports so far. Uh, and we have some other questions. Uh, so appreciate the time you took, Robert, and uh, um, uh, please uh, stick in, or stick on, or hop off to another meeting. I know you're a busy guy. Um, so uh, one question that came in uh, was from Venkatesh, who uh, asked, uh, all right, I'm creating an indicator. I have a number of users with location Im information, and it has over 150K records. Um, I wanna collect um, uh, the scores, not necessarily the records for these for this indicator, uh, but I want to run the collection job. It, it runs it runs out with an error saying, "Hey, there's too many records because of the 50k limit." Um, Adam, do you have a question, an answer right off the bat for this gentleman? Yeah. So the the limit with 50k is is going to work. Um, a lot most of the time so we, we ship out of the box the 50k limit so that things work fine the real the reason that's there is there's a restriction on the memory usage dealing with the number of scores and the number of scores is very loosely tied to the number of records it's certainly a factor of that but it has to do with the number of elements and the number of breakdowns so the you generally you can raise it to 100,000 150,000 200,000 and you'll be okay um, the concerns that we have are, is it going to grow by 50,000 every month? You know, if we, if I make it uh, 200,000 today, am I going to need to make it 500,000 at the end of the year? And there is a limit to what, what you can pull back, uh, because of how we process the scores, but, um, it depends, it really does depend on what type of data you have. Um, but if, as long as you limit the number of breakdowns, if you have 10 breakdowns and you're breaking down by assignment group and assigned to and getting all the uh, uh, matrices collected, it can run out of memory. The job can run out of memory. But if you're generally, um, uh, for most data, I, I wouldn't have a lot of heartburn about setting it to 200,000. Um, you certainly want to test it in your, oh, there are no breakdowns and it, it's just the indicator um, with no breakdowns. You can you can certainly set that to two hundred thousand and collect it. You'll be fine. Um, yeah. Do you test that uh, test that in your sub prod. Yes, and uh, yeah, indeed, <laughs> test it out in a sub prod first, uh, and be mindful, right? That the fifty k limit is not set there without reason, right? It it it, it makes you want to question. Okay, well, what am I collecting, and do I really need to collect this over data over time, or is this more a, a report that I'm using? And I would like to, to see the, the real time uh, information of the number, right? The report basically does a um, standard database query, right? To get, the, to, to get the number. Whereas PREA tries to look at the actual records and then sums those record counts. So um, um, uh, you have to think about what it is that you're, you're trying to get to. And as Adam said, if you expect the volume to increase like um, uh, month over month, right? So now it's a hundred and then in a year from now, it's going to be a million, then don't do it. It doesn't make any sense because you, you will, you will break your notes. You will have to think about it differently and get back to us with, with questions. Okay. Am I, am I thinking about this wrong? Am I using performance analytics the right way? Um, another question that I saw, um, uh, hanging down there, was let me see uh, before I skip one. Um, by default, users with any role can create new PA dashboards. Is there a property to turn it off? Um, well, uh, dashboards are the replacement for 
home pages. So uh, um, and typically you, you should be able to have at least your own dashboard. So we try to not uh, limit the end users to create their own little dashboard. Um, however, uh, Adam, do you know that off the bat? I need to check. I, I, will, I will dive into the doc. I think there may be a setting to do that. So unless you already know the answer. No, so wait, I, I will give you. Uh, I wouldn't want to turn it off for my end users um, just because everyone deserves a dashboard. At least one, right? Um, you need to start somewhere. Um, let's see. There is a question for related to the reporting module, a different behavior on the group by option versus additional group by. Not all the fields are available on the group by. So the questions are, is there a plan to make this two options act in the same way as an additional group by? I, I believe the answer is yes, but I believe it's gonna be more restrictive. Um, the additional group by is, is allowing you to group by string fields, um, which can cause issues uh, or, it can cause performance issues. So there, um, I, I believe that's, I've seen this before and I think there was a, a PRB for it. Um, and the actual that's recommendation correct, is, Adam. yeah, is to, is to make it more restrictive so that you're only grouping by things with finite options. So choiceless um, reference fields. And because if you do group by short description, really bad things can happen. Rob, you wanted to add something? No, that is completely correct. It, uh, the reason it is um, now not in by default is because of the security or this potential performance issue. Uh, one of the things that we are thinking about is should we still allow it or should we make that more intelligent into uh, knowing in what, what cases we allow it or not, uh, or in, in some cases still let an admin uh, be able to do something. Perfect. But that's completely correct. Um, okay, I see more questions coming in on the sharing of dashboards. Uh, if you got, if you look at the uh, doc pages, uh, there are some controls around the sharing of dashboards, right? So, for example, the ability of users to share responsive dashboards may be limited by the admin, right? So, there's a bunch of um, responsive dashboard properties that you can use in order to, for example, prevent sharing. So let me just post that into the uh, chat so that everybody can review a little bit uh, before we uh, going on. All right, so here's the doc session. So I saw a question coming in from Brian and Way obviously around that. So if you two would be so kind to review also the, the properties. So that should serve your needs. Um, then we have a question for, from Shwana who asks, how do you calculate average business duration by assignment group? Um, and with average business duration, you mean like an incident business duration? So this would be uh, answered by a metric, for example, is an option which was probably the most common, commonly used option. The, the uh, challenge you have with metrics is that there, it's, there's a little bit more work to do to calculate the business duration um, and configuring that. Generally, we're doing metrics out of the box. It's very simple to do wall clock, but business duration relies on you to configure what the business duration means. Uh, you know, is it the callers? business duration, is it yours? There's, there's a lot of complications. The other thing that you wanna look at if you're trying to get this answer um, is looking at SLA breakdowns. That's where we see a lot of things, um, where there's actually a lot of answers uh, provided there. So SLA breakdowns were, were introduced in London, I believe. There's a plugin that you have to enable. Um, I'm not sure if uh, customers knew in Madrid or London were Z-booted on with it, but if your instance was provisioned prior to London, 
you definitely have to turn on the plugin. But breakdown, um, uh, SLA breakdowns allow you to look at by group and by user for everything that happens in the SLA. Um, it, it's uh, just one of the things that I get asked for all the time and it's incredibly easy to configure. So if I have a resolution SLA, which is a should be a pretty common one, a resolution SLA from when it opens to when it's resolved, there will not just be the SLA and if it breached or not, but it will actually give me a breakdown of how long each group had. And that'll allow you to catch the case where um, uh, I had, we have a three day SLA for resolution. I had it for two, two and a half days, didn't do anything. And then I threw it over to, uh, to David uh, David resolved it in six hours, but it breached. But it, you know, if we actually look at it, it was because I sat on it and didn't do anything the whole time. So the SLA breakdown is normally where I would want to look at to get that business duration, because then you can take advantage of all of the SLA um, set it, uh, pauses, resets, all that complication stuff, uh, all complex stuff that's already handled. You'll be able to see. All right, SLA breakdowns, I think, uh, might deserve uh, additional attention as well, uh, Adam. So I've noted that one down. Um, um, let's see, are there any plans to make it possible to select elements from two different breakdown sources at the same time on a breakdown dashboard? Um, at, not at the moment. Uh, it will be possible in New York to be able to select um, more than one element from the same breakdown source uh, on a dashboard. So with the New York release, uh, which is imminent, um, that's going to be possible, um, but not from two different breakdown sources. So you would wanna see by assignment group and priority on the same dashboard for performance analytics. Uh, that, that's going to be uh, difficult. Uh, you do know that if you have a more operationally oriented dashboard, so a, a dashboard which essentially has a tab that contains maybe uh, only uh, filters, interactive filters, you can have that uh, information. If you want to have it over time for PA, no, that's not currently in plan. But as said, um, the, the improvement in New York is going to be that you at least are able to have it uh, for a single breakdown source where you can have multiple, select multiple elements on a, on a dashboard. Else you need to look at the, your use case and see if that's not, if it goes beyond the operational uh, ask. So can't you just serve it with um, reports? Um, for Dean, when configuring a time series chart, is there a way to change the per field to have more options? I want to show data per two weeks by sprint, not per week or by month. Good question, uh, Dean. Uh, at the moment, there, there is, uh, we do have a, a way where there is a, like a sort of a schedule that you can uh, create in performance analytics. However, that is currently not tied to uh, the rest of ServiceNow. So uh, there, there are plans to basically unify all uh, unify the back end to make sure that we have like a, a unified scheduling uh, method where we can, for example, indeed create the, the, the by sprint um, time series. Uh, but that's currently not in, the, in, in, in any release and it's also not in the, uh, scheduled for the foreseeable um, upcoming release that's currently in the devel under development. So the, when I have to do this in other cases, particularly with Sprint, um, some of the, the, the tricks that I'll, I'll use uh, to get to what I wanted to get to, um, while I want the report just to do that, um, and, and there's, we're trying to figure out how to make that work. Um, what I will do is to um, do a time series report based off of the Sprint start date. Or what I'll do is to um, add a ref is create a table that gives me those breakdowns that gives me the, the sprint period or wh whatever I want it to be. And then on the story um, or in the sprint, I link to, um, to that reference table and then I'm able to do a pivot. It, it's not a true time series or a trend, but I can do a pivot that will allow me to group some of the things together. Uh, I do the same thing for hour of day or, or for um, 
work hours, non-work hours, where I just want to break those two things apart, I have a reference table that says this, if it's in between this time of day, um, or sorry, when an incident comes in, it looks at this table and says, well, it came in at 5 a.m. That's not a work hour. So it, reference, it gives me a reference to the work hour, or I false, or I, it, it came in at 10 a.m. That is a work hour. I, I do that. Um, and then I'm able to do just a normal bar chart or something like that using that reference table. It's not quite as pretty as where we want it to be, but it normally gets me what it normally gives me a report or uh, chart that answers that question. All right, thanks, Alan. Um, from Catherine, how do we determine the average assignment duration by state by assignment group for incidents using Madrid? So that's kind of in the line with the earlier response, I think, Adam. Um, SLA breakdowns, would that also work for this uh, use case? Yeah, I, I, I think it depends. If metrics might be a good fit here too. Um, it depends on what you're asking for, if it's a uh, wall clock or not. SLA, whenever I'm dealing anything with incidents and assignment groups, SLA breakdowns is where I really want to start with because the complexities of handling pause conditions um, and, and holidays and, and time zones is just, it hurts my mind, but the SLA engine already handles all that and allows me to configure that. So I certainly would want to look at SLA, um, at the SLA breakdowns for most of it. And then if I'm really just looking at wall clock because we need to get these things done, um, which is a lot of times where we come in with state, um, state, state often doesn't have a business duration. It's just how long was it sitting and pending? Um, then I can look at metrics. So it really comes down to what, what am I trying to get out of it? What do I want to do? And then I'm going to be either using metrics, um, hopefully just plain vanilla duration metrics, or I'll be looking at those SLA durations. The SLA breakdown, SLA breakdowns, where I, which has a, a, business uh, duration on it yeah it, it, it's I guess it's depending on uh, what uh, this this seems to be um, where where would you want to use it for right is it is it like to to uh, penalize someone in in the sense that they're uh, exceeding a, a certain X amount of time or not um, it's it's not about um, uh, driving improvement I guess that's 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 the it's it's basically uh, making sure that there's a report and to see where the uh, the bottleneck is, for example. Um, so uh, I, I would agree, uh, Adam, uh, um, if you don't need the world clock, if you have uh, the world clock, then you could just suffice with um, a calculation in metrics, or else you need to go to the SLAs. Um, and, and, and I think the other thing to look at too is, is to your point, what, what do you want to do with it? If I am just trying to, um, have some benchmarks, then metrics are fine. But if I'm really trying to improve, if I'm really trying to, to improve this, I know there's an issue and I want to improve it. SLAs is a good option, right? SLAs do things. Um, you can have breach warnings, right? You've already, 75% of the time has elapsed. That allows you to take, you for, take it from being running reports and then going to do things to having the system manage itself. So a lot of people are afraid of using SLAs, but SLAs are really good. Right, and they they are going to help you manage, the, manage the process, not just identify that you have a bad process. I hear a blog coming up, Adam. The the SLAs are your friend. Uh, we'll use that title. It's very good. <laughs> um, so uh, let me see how to how to get. I think Catherine would really appreciate us digging into that uh, topic a little bit more. Uh, let's continue. Um, Jason, uh, hey Jason, uh, nice to see you again. Uh, I have a requirement to report current safe epics feature stories broken down by state uh, and there is a di discrepancy between the value and the sequence columns in the, in the state choice in the choice table of state. Um, how can I sort the state order by sequence rather than by value? Um, it depends. It, it, some of the the reports generally look at value, not sequence. Um, it, 
it get, it gets it can get a little complicated in what you want to do. Um, I, I think it's hard to debug here if we're able to do it. it. And sometimes we end up changing the the values so that they match. Uh, so they match the sequence. Um, is it sorting by alphabetical order of the value? I, I'm not I'm not sure. If we're looking at state. Yeah, generally I think I, I think it should actually sort by sequence. So I want to look at what's going on. That, that's why the sequence is there. And it's sorting by the value, I'm, I'm assuming, in alphabetical. Um, I don't think that's how it should behave. So I would, I would want to take a look at that. What, what oh, the oh, the numerical order of value. OK, that makes sense. Um, is, isn't this more like a, a, a case where we would advise Jason to uh, reach out to support to make sure? Yeah, I think so. I think you want to open up a case and because and we'll, we'll want some developers to come in to see if, they, if there is something we can do to change that or what the report type is. But it, it, we would need to dig in quite a bit to, to figure out where the issue is. All right. Thanks, Jason. Sorry, I can't be of immediate assistance. Uh, oh, Jesus is back. Uh, he almost forgot to, to mention that uh, he wanted to sort the pivot based on aggregation results. Would you advise, advise how to tackle this? Um. Uh, the multi-level pivot doesn't do that today. Uh, I mean, the, the way that we'll often do it is, is in PA, we can. In PA, we can sort off the value, but in a pivot report, it it just that we don't support support sorting by value. It is it is on the list. It, you're you're not the first one to ask for it, but it, it's just not something that happens today. All right. Uh, no is also an answer, right? That's uh, sometimes uh, sad but true. Um, let's see. Anyone else have a question that we have not answered? Let me see. If I quickly go down, I think I, I'm, if, there, if I forgot someone, oh, no, no, no. If I forgot someone, please just repeat. Sometimes it's, it's a challenge to, to get everything done. Banu has a question. In domain separated instances, is it sufficient to have a data collector job on the top domain? Or is it required to have the collector job in each domain? Um, I, it depends on what you're, where you're going to show it. I, I, if you want to get the score for each domain, uh, I, I mean, I know we use it in the top domain to get the global numbers. I don't think it groups by domain unless you collect it by domain. Um, however, there are the, the there's the, the MS, uh, there's the domain separation toolkit for PA. Um, I would take a look at that documentation because it walks you through the different scenarios. Uh, yes, there, I was going to say there's an excellent uh, document on, on, on the whole subject of how to use performance analytics in a domain separated environment and what choices you have to make based on your objectives. Uh, I'm trying to search so I can easily post it. So uh, bear with me. Uh, and I, I believe that's being revised right now too, that we're, we're adding some more documentation into it, but it's certainly something where you have to look at what your expected outcome is and then configure it that way. There are different, there's just, there are different use cases and then you, and you configure it differently to match those use cases. Okay. Um. Would you also, Karen, Catherine Zwack, would you also recommend using SLAs to capture the average lead time for change? So a proposed start to submit it for approval, or would this be better to measure using metrics? Uh, it, it, this one, it seems, uh, um, yeah, for me, would be metric, it would be easier, but yeah, you could also use an SLA for that. Yeah, I mean, I, th I, th I would, my first in instinct would be use uh, metric so I can see what the time is. Um, and the only issue would be is if I actually, if I have somebody who is gonna manage that, um, is it something I just need to know the background or am I really pushing to have, 
if I have assignment time, if I have a change manager whose job is to make that lead time as small as possible, then I might want to look at an SLA. But if I'm if I'm just want to understand that the lead time is generally 10 days, that's okay, right? That's some background information, know what's going on. Um, I want to look at SLAs when I am when I have a person who's responsible for it. So that's great for assignment SLAs. I, whether it, I have some a team that's responsible for assignments, I want an assignment SLA. I want to have a uh, first contact SLA from when it gets assigned to me to when I reach out to them. I want to have a resolution SLA because that's something I'm going to, somebody's responsible for and I want to measure and hold them accountable for that. Lead time to change uh, is, metric seems nice. Yeah, we also like metrics. I love um, metrics. <laughs> Uh, Braven has a, a, a question on uh, when exporting a list report containing an image field to PDF. Uh, do do we still do that? Do we do we still PDF? Oh my God! Uh, not all images are shown on the exported PDF file. Is this only a problem for me or a common problem? Um, good question, Braven. I uh, I if if you run into this as an issue, and not just you, but uh, uh, other people in your org as well. Um, then please make sure you reach out to uh, the high support team and, 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 and uh, let them be aware of the issue. Um, I have not seen the issue before, but it could also mean that the image cannot be retrieved by, that's the only thing that I can think of, unless Adam also has something, the image cannot be retrieved by the the separate uh, PDF server instance that we use to uh, generate the, the, the PDF. Um, so um, that would be my first guess to, to look at if, if it's, if it's uh, like a, an authorization issue or it, can, it just cannot find it. I, I think a high ticket, high case is probably worthwhile here to dig into it. Ah, yeah, customers. Yeah, they, I understand. Yeah, they love PDFs. And sometimes I like PDFs as well. But, uh, <coughs> All right. So let me see. I think we uh, covered everything, unless people uh, last minute uh, pop up something that's really disturbing or they want to wrap, wrap their brain around. Uh, Anything that we have in the backlog that we can answer? Let me see, Adam, I can have you answer something. Mm. Oh, maybe this one, because this is SLA related. What is the best time to schedule a daily collection for the SLAs? Um, Does it even matter? I don't know that it matters. Um, I, 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 I generally, I, depends on what your indicator is on, on SLAs. I, I would generally look at early morning. Uh, the breach time and the, the breach date and as it passed is there. So it's not, I believe it's not time sensitive. The breached flag, if you use that, would matter. But the, the mantra for PA is dates, not states. And I believe all your SLAs have dates. Uh, so you can calculate what's going on. Um, if you were trying to get a snapshot, the only piece I could see is elapsed time. Elapsed time is going to be updated. Um, you're you're going to have a hard, you don't want to recre recreate the elapsed time, uh, but you can't, you can recreate is it breached or not. Um, so f shortly after midnight would be good, like, like a lot of other things, but not, it's, it's so not So how essential. would you handle intraday uh, SLAs and SLOs? Intraday, I, I mean, I'd be in operational reports. I don't think I'd be in PA um, because like I want to look. Answer to me. Yeah, I. It, that's not a trend, right? The reason I'm gonna the reason I'm gonna use PA is to understand: Am I breach? Generally speaking, am I breaching more or less? Um, am I meeting on my SLAs? If I meet, if I'm meeting 99.9 percent of my SLAs, my SLAs aren't good enough, right? Let's tighten them up. Um, let's let's do better than that. And on the same token, if I'm if I'm sometimes meeting them, you know, 50% attainment and sometimes 
Um, 90% attainment, I have some other issues to work out. But if I yes. just need to go, what's going to break today? That's a report. Exactly, right? That's the operational dashboard or the operational tab on your dashboard. And then you have the, like, the analytical trend tab uh, attached to it in the same dashboard. So you can do both uh, the current state of affairs and anything that, that needs your immediate attention versus the, 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 the things that you want to analyze for, for basically uh, process improvements or overall improvements. Um, so, and again, right, we're, we're, we are the analytics and reporting, so we, we do both, right? We do both operational and trend. So trend, maybe we should rename ourselves and call ourselves uh, operational and trending um, uh, would be an interesting train of thought. Uh, hey, I see some more questions coming in. Uh, text clouds, I have added a filter to my dashboard, which seems to work fine. Um, and I recently added new stop words. Then if I use the filter, the new stop words do not get captured. If I don't use the filter, the stop words are caught. Any ideas why it wouldn't work with a dashboard filter? I don't know why you'd get different behavior for the two. Yeah. Um, I'd expect that they were all ignored or they were all included. Uh, based on when it was collected and all that configuration, that two different behaviors is quite odd to me. Um, this is one I we probably would want a high case on to take a look at. Hopefully, there's just a small setting or something that's wrong, but I, I, it would be really hard to diagnose with, with just this description without looking at the instance. Yep, I agree, Adam. Shwana, so please uh, reach out to our... Uh, uh, I, I believe you would have to rerun the job yes, with the stop uh, words. Of course, yes. Uh, that's what I was expecting, but I the the two the 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 filter um, showing them and not showing them. That's what I don't understand. I'd ex I, I would actually expect it when you add new stop words, they're still all there until tomorrow or right, until the next collection. But uh, you can try rerunning them and see if it works. And then if not, and you're still getting different behavior, then I would open up a case on high. Yeah. Catherine, how do we determine which PA plugins are needed when standing up PA? Which is the core set of plugins and which one, ones are optional, uh, let's say Madrid PA Premium? I've looked for a checklist and haven't been able to find one. Well, there is an entire uh, page dedicated to this on the um, community, which is called Performance Analytics Getting Started Subform. There are changes coming that way, so we're going to get rid of the subform, but right now there is still the Performance Analytics Getting Started Subform. In there, uh, there is all this information around um, what content packs you may have been entitled to and which are related. To, yes, I will post a link, of course. Um, and um, to make sure um, uh, that um, we get you up current information. And I know that Adam was working on updating that table. Uh, so this is another nudge, I think, to Adam, or maybe he pushes it down back to me to make sure that that table gets updated. Uh, with the right versioning information. I think it currently works up until uh, London. London. Um, the, the question I, I have to follow up, uh, Catherine, is are you looking for the functionality plugins like Spotlight or are you looking, at, are you looking for uh, content packs? And the, uh, for both. So functionality wise, you shouldn't have very many things to turn on. Um, you may need to turn on spotlight if you have not turned that on. Um, and then really the, ol the only other thing I'm thinking about, there's a couple of features and it really depends when you've come in. Um, and that has to do with uh, interactive analysis. You need to turn on spotlight. I believe you need to turn on. We, we, we rarely turn on plugins when you upgrade um, because we want you to be in control. One of the key things for this, um, I know with interactive analysis, a lot of people haven't turned it on. Same thing happens for SLA breakdowns. A lot of people love it, 
but nobody knows to turn it on. The key thing that you'll want to do when you upgrade is read the release notes. Um, when you read the release notes, you're going to see the new features. And generally speaking, new features will require you to turn it on a plugin, which we want you to do in a sub prod, see how it works for you, and then, and then turn it on in production. We don't want to just make changes underneath you and have you see new stuff that you, that you don't expect. Um, so those are the, the feature plugins. Those are going to come in, um, read, read the release notes. So twice a year, see what's there. The content packs come in in the release notes. You'll see them as part of the solution. So if I'm implementing CSM, there is a, a page in CSM that tells you here are the content packs that are available. A same thing for HR, same thing for ITSM. That content is getting a lot better. Uh, that's out there, a lot more information. So you want to look in the solution to see what's there. Um, in addition to that, there are now store uh, applications. So you'll see more, more functionality, more content packs being, avail being made available in the store. Um, so there's a lot of stuff. We're going to do a better job communicating that out to you. So we're going to start talking about some of those things in office hours um, and showcasing those things. But you'll do, you do want to look um, in the docs for the solution. That's where you're going to find those content packs. Uh, we want to make it easier to find. Uh, and then the features, I, I don't know of any changes to that being other than the release notes. And then we're going to talk about them here. Uh, so I think shortly we're going to talk about um, New York when that becomes available uh, in I think early September. Um, uh, after that's available on this call, we'll talk about what's new for PA and what you need to do to turn it on or not. So hopefully that'll help everybody here. All right, perfect. We're ending the hour. So uh, I'm going to um, tap down on the Yep, thank you. Uh, that's great feedback. Um, just want to end that um, indeed, uh, let's say well, Robert Young just showed you the maps, right, uh, feature. Uh, we have content packs uh, that actually ship the maps feature out of the box. Uh, so any, any one of you working uh, in the uh, security incident response, for, for example, or in the vulnerability uh, response uh, sections, uh, there, uh, especially so, especially in this security operations side of the house, uh, there's out of the box content which has the maps functionality in use, and you just you install all the the application. Uh, most of the dashboard these days they either come pre-activated already, or you have a very easy job just uh, finding it and activating it. It's also mentioned as as Adam said in the documentation. Uh, and we will doing, uh, and we're basically uh, at this moment making sure that we increase uh, and improve the documentation and the community uh, to better serve the needs for out of the box information around content packs and what's in it and how to use them. Um, so, having said that, uh, I would like to uh, thank you very much for attending today and joining us. And we're looking forward to seeing you again in two weeks, uh, which will be uh, the 14th of August. Um, as a reminder, uh, make sure this session will be posted to our YouTube playlist in the near future, along with all the previous recordings. You can see uh, the bit.ly to the PA office hours uh, on the uh, share at the moment. In the meantime, uh, we encourage you to please leverage the community to, for your questions, to get input and also to uh, make sure to give your input, right? To answer the questions that uh, have been, um, uh, that are thrown around there. Because as you uh, go along and you build up knowledge and experience, you are uh, yourself becoming an expert and a great contributor. And we will make each other's lives a lot better if we all contribute. Uh, in the community, you will also find links to available trainings for performance analytics, uh, which includes the new free self-paced performance analytics essentials training. Uh, I encourage you all to uh, at least uh, go for that one. It's only an hour of your time uh, and it's really uh, well done. And I hope that you have a great remainder of your day. So thank you very much and uh, see you next time.